Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to video number 11, where we are sewing together all 10 blocks of the Liberty Wall Sampler and finishing up this quilt top today. To get started today, we're going to be sewing three seams. We're going to bring over blocks four and five. We'll also be sewing together blocks three and eight. And then we'll, we will be bringing in blocks seven and nine. I'm going to bring all three of these sections over to the sewing machine. We'll set up our quarter inch seam allowance. And sew each one of these sections while we're here. I wanted to make a note that any of the seams that you are piecing that fall along the outside edge of your quilt just wanted to share a little tip with you. I like to do a little back stitch, and you'll see here with this seam, this seam is gonna fall right on the right side of my quilt. So I like to do a little back stitch when ending this seam. And if you do that for each one of your seams that fall along the edge of your quilt, all of those seams will stay together as you are layering and quilting your quilt. Any of the other seams are going to be locked in with other seams of the quilt, and so the back stitch is really not that necessary. We'll bring these three sections over and press them. We're going to be doing a lot of back and forth today as we piece together the different sections of this quilt top. And I usually like to press my seam from the back just to get it to behave, and then press from the front. For these seams, I will be pressing these seams to one side, and I generally, because we do have intersections of different blocks coming together, I usually let the seam tell me which way it wants to go, and that's the way that I usually press it. Now coming back to the pressing mat, we're going to be joining these sections. So you have block one, and then the section of four and five, and then block number six. We're gonna be sewing these two seams right here. I know this is gonna be a fast paced video as we're sewing together all 10 of these blocks together. So at any time, if you were following this video to piece together your quilt top, feel free to come back and rewatch or pause the video. There's also a detailed breakdown of the layout that I'm following in the pattern. Again, you'll notice uh, this seam right here, or actually both of these seams have edges that are going to be on the left side of the quilt. So I do a little back stitch just to lock those seams along the edge of the quilt. Coming over, we're gonna press these two seams. Then we're gonna set this section aside. We're gonna work on the right side of the quilt. So here we have our Liberty block and then blocks three and eight. We'll flip over the Liberty block and we're going to sew this seam right here. I always have a hard time saying Liberty, <laughs> especially if I'm talking fast, Liberty. <laughs> I know this video has sped up quite a bit, but I'm really slowing down and taking my time with these seams, just trying to stay nice and straight as possible. We'll bring this section over and give it a press. Then we're going back to the mat and we're going to join blocks seven and nine right to the bottom.
we will go give this seam a press. And now we should have three sections. We should have the left side, the right side, and then the bottom strip number 10. We're going to join these two sections just like this. This is the seam that runs right down from the top through the middle of our quilt. You'll notice because this is a longer seam that I have thrown some pins in there just to help keep these sections together as I work from the very top down towards the bottom. Pressing this seam, now she's growing in some size. This seam no longer fits on my pressing board, so I'm having to move things around. We'll press it from the front, and at this point, we only have one more seam to sew to finish up this quilt top, and that is to join block number 10 at the very bottom. Again, I'm just gonna throw some pins in there to help it stay in place. And for this seam, you will want to do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. As I've been piecing all of these sections together, I'm trying to Pay real close attention to these open seams and making sure that none of them flip over as I pass them by, sewing across them. I'm going to tell you what, I have enjoyed this series so much. I am really looking forward to quilting this quilt. I do believe I'll be quilting this on my Juki, the same machine that I'm piecing these blocks with. I do plan on making a video on quilting and binding this quilt. I had a comment on block number 10's video uh, asking if I would show how to bind this quilt. Just to let you know, I do have a couple of binding videos here on my channel that you might find helpful if you Go to YouTube and in the search box, type in Lisa Cape and Quilts Binding Tutorial. Those videos will probably come up. You might find those helpful, but I will bring you along as I bind this quilt. I do think uh, I'm going to take a day or two to make that video because I haven't quite decided what I'm going to use as the backing fabric of this quilt. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the binding. At first I thought I was going to do a solid uh, binding, but I have so much fabric left over that I'm considering a scrappy binding. And I think that would be pretty awesome. Not quite there yet on making that commitment. So give me a couple days. I will be back to finish up this quilt with you. And uh, yes, I'm having so much fun. I can't wait to see your pictures. If you subscribe, uh, and hit the bell notification, you'll get notified when I upload uh, the next video. That might be helpful. And there is a playlist in the description box that all these videos are saved and grouped together. Here's our finished quilt top. I can't wait to see yours, and I can't wait to see you next time as we quilt and bind the Liberty Wall Sampler. Bye everybody.